Hey. Hey. I never met a Miss USA before, so I'm so honored. So. Oh, well, I'm honored that you joined us this morning. I know you're super busy. I can't imagine how much stuff is going and, on. You, know, uh, you and the other women who are in, in beauty pageants nowadays, the way you've changed them, the way everything is different is so thrilling to me as it relates to gir young girls, young girls of color, lesbians. You really like took hold of something out of date and made it something critical and uplifting and affirming. So you go. Oh, thank so you so impressed. much. That is so kind of you. What a way to start off this call. I love hearing <laughs> that. Oh my God. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. Recently, Chi, one of our sponsors, donated 100 bottles of Chi BioSilk hand sanitizer to Aid Win, which is the largest provider of family shelter and supportive housing in New York City. And today I have Chris Quinn from Win, the CEO of Win, who's going to be joining me to talk about some needs that Win. Um, has right now and what you've been going through as we've been uh, really trying to get through this this pandemic. Um, so thank you so much, Chris, for joining us this morning. Well, thank you and thank you guys for all of your support and the hand sanitizers were very, very welcome as they continue to be. You know, as you said, Wynn is the largest provider in New York City of housing, of shelter, and permanent supportive housing for homeless families with children. Now, usually, you know, I think in most of America, when you think of homeless, you think of the single people you see on the street who need massive amounts of help, of help also. But to have a child on the street in most jurisdictions is a crime. So you don't see families. But in New York City right now, at the peak of the epidemic of homelessness, 70% of the people in shelter are families with children. So the vast majority. There, 25% of everyone in shelter is six years of age or younger. To put it in, in perspective, there are uh, more children in shelter right now than there are seats in Madison Square Garden, which I think really shows you the image. So this is, is the work that Wynn staff does is top on a good day, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're having to address all the traumas that our moms have gone through, all the traumas our children have gone through, while simultaneously helping them address mental health, domestic violence, uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, et cetera, while simultaneously in the toughest real estate market in the country, and there's other cities out there that are really, really tough as well, and in urban centers, fewer residences. Anyway, you're dealing with all that and you're trying to get somebody out of shelter so they can live in independently in their own home and really thrive. Now you add on to that, this, it's a totally different ballgame. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I think, you know, obviously the pandemic that we're experiencing right now, just being in New York City, the epicenter exacerbates all of those problems. Yes. So what, what, what more challenges are you facing now in terms of access to resources to combat COVID-19? Well, first, as it relates to resources, we immediately started buying things, about $300,000 at last count, of items we were not budgeting for, masks gloves, hand sanitizers, uh, f food, right? We need to have, we, we have food pantries in our shelters, but we needed them stocked to the gills because in, in case people couldn't shop for the people who get sick. In our permanent housing, we don't have food pantries. We needed to set those up. We needed to get supplies. So, you know, crayons, stuffed animals, et cetera. So as everyone was quarantining or isolating in their own units, which think of a small, uh, smallish studio apartment, you have your own kitchen, et cetera, that the children would have soothing uh, uh, toys like stuffed animals, but also have the ability to draw and have crayons and read books through this amazing group called First Book and the American Federation of Teachers. They paid for it. We got 10,000 books that our children now have and are in, they can take into their unit and, and read. So there was just a whole bunch of stuff we needed to purchase right away. Other stuff we've gotten donated, but we needed to be ready. And we needed to be able to give all of the staff, here's your personal cleaning kit. We went from cleaning the facilities uh, one time a day to four times a day 
that's a lot more materials from the maintenance staff. And then we want to give the clients of which there are 5,000 clients uh, their own cleaning materials that they could have um, as well. So that was a lot of money, you know, right off the bat. And then it just continued as we needed more items, uh, you know, moving forward. We've and had- how, how difficult is it to make sure that your clients are practicing social distancing when oftentimes they're in such close quarters? So I have to say the clients at Win have been dynamite as it relates to kind of following the guidance or the rules of social distancing. So you don't see a lot of our clients kind of in the hallway, sitting in the yard, at the playground, at the, you know, we have playgrounds at each facility, at the playground, outside. People are really, I mean, those who are quarantined are diligent and we bring them meals every day. We pick up their garbage. We do their laundry at an industrial laundry. They don't, they, you see, you don't see them at all for 14 days. But the other clients who are not necessarily ill are doing a really great job of staying in their units and going outside of their units and outside of the shelter as little as they possibly can. And I think it's a real credit to them, but I also think it's a bit of a privilege o awakening moment for people. That's a clumsy way to say it, but these folks, Look, they, the day before the pandemic started, whenever that was, we now think longer ago, they had a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and they had a hard life. Oh, yeah. And now there's this terrible sickness. And the last thing they want their, to do is their life to get harder. No one wants their kids to get sick. But mm -hmm. our moms know if their kids get sick, they're not, there is just not the same resources for them. They didn't come to the shelter with having a pediatrician they had a long-term relationship with. That's not how poverty works. Yeah, well, and you already have so many people that you're helping. I mean, 4,600 about every night that Win helps. I mean, have those numbers grown since the um, pandemic really uh, started here in New York City? So we can't grow more than about 5,000 because that's the number of five to six thousand. That's the number of units we have, which mm -hmm. is making us the larger. Now, people can leave and then new people come in. We've not seen a lot of people leaving for obvious reasons. It's although there are some virtual housing to apartment tours and apartment inspections, I think for obvious reasons, we, we're not seeing that. As soon as things go back to the first phase of whatever the new normal is, we will immediately try to get everyone who can get out of shelter, out of shelter into apartments. We're actually in addition to the service we do, we do political advocacy and we're pushing the city of New York right now to create a special housing voucher just mm -hmm. to help people who've been in shelter during COVID get out more quickly. And if you're in your apartment and you could lose it, this would be this one-time special voucher for mm -hmm. you. And why is it important to get people out? Well, because you don't want people to languish in shelter and poor things, you know, been there and had to quarantine and isolate. But I suspect that the number of people coming into the shelter system who've lost their jobs, and these could be folks who've never been in the system before, is going to be enormous. I believe it's gonna skyrocket. So we really need to do everything we can appropriately to have mm -hmm. enough space for the, the new folks coming in. Gotcha. And what additional problems are your clients facing? I mean, we talked about access to more permanent housing. Um, what about jobs and job interviews and even being able to view um, apartments uh, that they can right. move into now? Well, you know, jobs, jobs uh, are a key component to homelessness. Not having them, having them, but you don't make enough money to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the government programs that are out there to help help you you can only access if you're working which is a little crazy if you think about it if you've entered the system because you're poor but that's a another conversation um so we have also so at when we have a very aggressive we call it income building program where we are working with moms to get them jobs or to get them better jobs about 30 percent of our moms come to us working in the time at when that number will go up to 53 percent are working so moms want to work. Mm -hmm. The problem, and we have a very tracked program 
where organizations like PepsiCo and, and Google and the Francine Lefrac Foundation give us money to train moms in industries they're interested in, but also in industries where we know there are job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we have seen, unfortunately, in the past, you know, two, three months, whatever it is now, a significant number of our mothers lose their jobs because they're the lowest on the totem pole, they're new to the job. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is, is gonna be top of our list when we get out of this and people can go out and the workplace and the economy is, is somewhat more uh, uh, going. I mean, we're also looking at opportunities like the contact tracers for testing that we're talking about. There's no reason our moms couldn't do that, but that is really a, a big worry for us. And I have to pat Lynn on the back. There's a housing voucher you get in New York City, but it pays thir whatever you make. You, so it pays, you pay 30% of your income to rent. It's a dollar. If it's a thousand dollars, it doesn't matter, 30%. Mm. The voucher pays 70%, which is great. Yeah, that's incredible. In the rules for the voucher, you can only get it if you're working. Wynn organized a campaign with other advocates and got the city to suspend that requirement throughout the rest of this pandemic. So oh, that's it, incredible. it really is because we have women in shelter who had a voucher, were ready to go look for apartments. Obviously that's very, very slowed down now. They thought they were gonna lose their voucher. Now they'll still have it while they're also looking for a job. And I really wanna thank the city <clears throat> for agreeing to that, that change. Well, and it, I think it takes, you know, supportive and understanding and flexible city leaders to yes. uh, get that level of cooperation and partnership. And I yeah. talk about supportive housing. Can you explain to people oh, sure. what supportive housing is and how it works with WIN? So there's about 30% of homeless families who will only thrive independently if they have a little extra support on site. So... We have buildings where the whole building is supportive housing, where half of the building is for community members, you know, at an income level, and the other half supportive. There's different ways to do it. But what it means is it's a permanent apartment. They're really quite lovely apartments. They come furnished with nice furnishing. And a lot of companies, you know, like TJ, uh, home goods and stuff will donate throw pillows and stuff just to make Bank of America uh, a recent one got everybody like top-notch microwaves and stuff. So they're really lovely when they're all said and done. But on the first floor will be offices. So case managers, perhaps a psychiatric social worker to give medicines, depending. We have um, support groups uh, starting to have income building, you know, people there to help you. Because you may have been, you go from some, to, to have qualified for supportive housing, you have to have been chronically homeless, which means three times in the past five years. You may never have paid a rent bill. You may not have paid a rent bill in a long time. To qualify for supportive housing, in addition to being chronically homeless, you have to either be a young woman who's aged out of foster care with a baby, so you're about 18 or 19, say, uh, someone who's a domestic violence survivor, someone with uh, mental health issues or substance abuse issues. So you have a lot going on in your life, but you're better if you're in stable, in permanent housing than if you're in the shelter. So it's just a little added extra support on site with case managers and social workers and right. others. Yeah, it's funny. I say this to people sometimes who look, look who face is saying, well, that's an awful lot. And I say generally, if it's if I'm in a group, you know, you may be thinking that's a lot of support to offer somebody. You don't, so you don't have to put your hands up, but how many of you in here have a therapist? How many of you in here are taking medication to help with mental health? How many of you have a cleaning lady, a nanny, a personal trainer, a gym? You have supportive housing. You have a supportive life. You can just pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, not that anyone's getting a personal trainer in supportive housing. And it's a critical component to ending the crisis of homelessness generally, but particularly for families. 
because yeah. we want to keep families together. Yes, are there tragic times when a child has to be taken away from a mom and shelter? Yes. But those we want to keep as limited as possible, and we want, it's always better to keep a family together, and supportive housing really gives moms who need a little extra help that opportunity. And you said that there, you know, you, you talked about, you know, how many families you have, how many kids there are that Wynn is taking care of and, and supporting. What challenges are students specifically facing during the pandemic? Well, you know, all students, uh, those experiencing homelessness or not, are having a tough time because you've gone from, you know, your whole life as a student, whether that's, you know, uh, one year uh, or you know, 10 years going to school a certain way. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to school online like this. And it's, and it happened in 24 or 48 hours. So that's a big, big switch. Mm -hmm. Most homes in New York City, though not all, because we really do suffer the digital divide in New York and communities of color and low income communities have let less connectivity. But, I mean, talking about the digital divide, you mean people who have access to Wi-Fi, to a computer, yeah. other resources that they need um, digitally in order to continue uh, sustaining their education. Absolutely. And most people would think New York City, every inch of the place has to be wired, you know, just to the, to the hilt. That's not true. We have entire neighborhoods, every single one of them, a neighborhood of color and a poor neighborhood that don't have any Wi-Fi, don't have any of the wiring, cabling, nothing. Mm. New York City shelters do not have Wi-Fi. Mm. We're pushing very hard to change that, but the city has not wanted to address that. So we moved to digital learning. We meaning shelters, we need particular types of iPads that have a cellular system on them. So mm. that's one. Yeah. Two, we got, although we were promised homeless shelters, that is, that we were going to get our iPads first, we got them a week and a half late. Mm -hmm. Homeless kids are behind in school. They, on average, go to two to three schools a year. And then we get the devices we need to switch to this brand new way of doing it in challenging technological, physical structures a week and a half late. Uh, now, I have to say, it's, it's unacceptable, and, and you know, Wynn was a big part of advocating to get them on time. Um, now, Wynn's recreation and youth staff and childcare staff has really now switches, switched to being virtual learning support staff, and they've been doing a really great job in a socially distant way. Every morning you wake up and there's a package from the Wynn teachers uh, of you know, some notes on the, that day's work, a little toy, uh, a nutritionally not good treat, you know, for the day. Also, when, and this is a terrible statement, when's a homeless shelter? We have a high level, high number of essential workers who are clients of when. They can't stay home and help their child with virtual learning. Your yeah, child- Yeah, and help the rest of them. Yeah, I can't. I think people don't think about things like that and the challenges that, that essential workers and our homeless population are facing. Um, what can who people wants at home do to help? Pardon me? I said, what can people at home do to help? Well, a lot. So first of all, if you go to WIND's website, make a donation, right? We, that's really important. It's important to help us with all our extra expenses this year and next year, et cetera. You may hear there's a lot of COVID philanthropic relief funds. There are but they're not going to exist next year, right? Mm -hmm. They usually exist in the beginning and this crisis is going to go on. So make a donation. I'm telling you, $5, $10 doesn't matter. Two, on our website, we have kind of like our Amazon or, or our wish list of mm -hmm. things. Purchase them. Mm -hmm. Purchase them for us. That makes a big difference. Having enough crayons and white paper for children in the rooms makes a difference. We have gotten, thank God, from First Book and the American Federation of Teachers, the books for children. I'd love to have books for mom so she could read in the unit as well. Mm -hmm. Hand sanitizer, mask. I mean, we thankfully now the city is doing mask donations, but 
but it's still not enough to make sure every worker, every client has a mask or a, uh, some of the clients prefer bandanas. Uh, we need to keep purchasing more than we're getting and help with that. So that list is there. Please utilize it to, to help support us. Yeah, well, I think that's a great idea. You know, people at home, I know there are a lot of people who are shopping on Amazon. I know I've bought yeah. on Amazon since everything is closed down. I mean, you could buy something for yourself and then also buy one or two items for, or, or more, hopefully, for yeah. people who need it at when. So it would thank make a you big so much. Yeah, thank you very much for all that you're doing and spreading the word and really keeping all connected across the country because we will get through this. We just have to make sure we do it together without pitting one group of us against the other. So I just applaud you. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And, and guys, again, you know, if you want to find out more about when um, Chris has talked about it, visit their website, winnyc.org.